This Raw Vision video is brought to you by Metro Solar, proud partner of the Richmond Football Club. So my role, I guess, is uh, the Sports Science Advisor. So I've been here for um, seven or eight years now, and the major part of my role is looking at um, monitoring their training loads, making sure we're, we're getting the players to reach certain standards which is going to improve their performance physically, um, but also reduce their risk of injury. A lot of my role is around um, technology, so GPS, um, looking at wellness markers, you know, other physical sort of testing um, to, to make sure that they're, they're on track. The GPS gives us information on distance covered, speeds traveling at, acceleration rates, um, also impacts, so when a player gets a knock, um, it records an impact as well. Um, so uh, on top of that, we get heart rate data, um, so it gives us a, a good snapshot of um, what the player's going through physically um, when he's on the ground. We've got a, a unit for every single player, so over the seven years, we've collected a, a heap of data on um, what is required to play AFL football. So we now can, can individualise our training and, and set benchmarks for each player based on their training age, their position, um, and, and who they are. For example, we wouldn't train Devon Marrick the same way we train Brandon Ellis um, because he just wouldn't be able to cope with those speeds or distances. Um, and similarly, Brandon um, probably wouldn't be able to cope with all the contacts that we put um, Ivy through. So. GPS has become massive um, across AFL football. Obviously, game day, we can measure all sorts of numbers and metrics, but um, particularly for training, um, you know, we've got units on every single player, including our rehabbers. Um, we can record how far, how fast, uh, what intensity is, how many times they change direction, um, you know, the heart rate, which we can get off the GPS as well. Yeah, we put a bit into the GPS in a fair bit of time, and um, but we certainly get a, bit, a fair bit back from it as well. So we have a computer set up um, on the bench um, during training and, and games. So. Um, the players are always coming over to, ch to check their data and, and make sure they're, they're achieving those benchmarks, both within the whole session and within individual drills. So they'll be regularly checking throughout the game to make sure you know, that they're up around their averages, they're above their average. Um, when they fall below their average, why is that? Is there something going on there? And, and as a team, we use that more for rotations um, and you know, seeing who's, who's had three or four hard efforts within a short period of time and may need a spell um, outside of the, the normal plan that we would, would have in place. Each year we've evolved how, how much data we use and how we, how we give it to the players and how the players use it, but it's got to a point now where you know, it's one of the first things the players look at during training and, and after training and, and they get reports um, after every session. So. It's, it's a big part of our program. We, we give the players very specific feedback, both individually as a team um, and, and within their lines as well. Um, so they know how they're tracking um, based on their own norms um, and, and within the groups, so within the whole team and within their own position um, area as well. Certainly um, a number of ways for injury prevention, you know, with the guys who are healthy, um, there's a certain amount of you know, high speed uh, running or sprinting that they need to do to help actually uh, maintain their, their condition so that they're um, better prepared for when they go there in games. And from a rehab point of view, you know, we can track the guys in rehab and take them to the levels that they need to achieve before they come into the main group, so they have to hit certain benchmarks as well. We know now what um, you know, the benchmarks are to play AFL football, so when a rehab is coming back we know that we have to go sometimes above and beyond those benchmarks to make sure they can cope with the demands of, of playing you know, a game of AFL football, particularly you know, for your long-term injuries who are, who are out for a long period of time. We, we know now what they need to achieve and can set them sort of goals along their way um, to, to get back to, to playing AFL football. As a club, um, we've been over and visited um, some other you know, clubs around the world, from the Premier League to the NFL, uh, NBA, all, all, all sort of different sports to get a snapshot of, of how they're using um, GPS and technology um, and, and sort of seeing if there's anything that we can apply with our players here at, at Richmond. It's a pretty big investment by the club, but it's one that's worthwhile and you know, to keep up with the modern demands of AFL and sports science, you, you've really got to have it. Uh, I would say now, you know, we've, we're doing it as, as well as, as most clubs and certainly from my experience we are, um, so it's a great thing to have. <laughs>